Hello, in this video, we're going to do an example of finding critical numbers. The question says to find the critical numbers of f of x equals 2 times the cosine of x plus the sine squared of x. Let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. So critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function such that the derivative is 0 at those numbers or it's undefined. The domain of this function is all real numbers because we have cosine and sine and their domains are all real numbers and so everything is okay here. There's nothing funny going on. There's no division by zero or anything like that. So let's start by taking the derivative and seeing what happens. So we have f prime of x is equal to, the derivative of cosine is negative sine and we have a two here. So this is going to be negative two sine x and here you can think of this as sine x quantity squared. We're going to use a chain rule. We're going to bring down the two. We'll leave the inside untouched, which is sine x. You subtract one from the exponent, so you have a one here. And then times the derivative of the inside function, while well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So again, we use the chain rule. We brought down the two left the inside function untouched, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So this is never undefined, so the only thing left to do is set it equal to zero and solve for x. Again, critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function where the derivative is undefined or it's zero. This derivative is never undefined, so now we're setting it equal to zero to find out what possible critical numbers we have. It looks like we can factor out uh, some stuff here, right? We can pull out a negative 2 sine x. This is negative 2 sine x. Parentheses. And let's see what goes here. What do you multiply by negative 2 sine x in order to get negative 2 sine x? Well, just 1. And then what do you multiply by negative 2 sine x in order to get all of this? 2 sine x cosine x. Well, we're going to need a minus because we want a plus, so minus, and then we already have the 2 sine x, so we just need the cosine x. Beautiful. And this is equal to 0. Let's check that. Negative 2 sine x times 1 is negative 2 sine x. Negative 2 sine x times negative cosine x is positive 2 sine x cosine x. Boom. We have a product equal to zero, so we can set each factor equal to zero. So this tells us that negative two sine x is equal to zero, or one minus cosine x is equal to zero. By the way, or in mathematics means one or the other or both, okay? So um, both of these are gonna lead to um, critical numbers. In the first equation, negative two sine x equals zero, we just divide by negative two we get sine x equals zero. There's no restrictions on our domain, so the domain is all real numbers here. Let's try to think about where this occurs. To do that, I'm going to think about the unit circle. Unit circle looks something like this. And on the unit circle, the key point is that every ordered pair is of the form cosine theta, comma sine theta. And the unit circle is a circle of radius one. So we want to know when the y-coordinate is equal to zero. So that's going to happen here, and it's going to happen here. At this particular point on the unit circle, the ordered pair is one comma zero. And at this particular point on the unit circle, the ordered pair is negative one comma zero. I know it's one and negative one because it's a circle of radius one. So it should be one and negative one. Sine is zero, because sine is the y-coordinate at those two points. What's the angle? Well, the angle here is zero and the angle here is pi, but the angle here is also two pi, et cetera, and the angle here is also um, you know, three pi, and the angle here is also negative two pi. So any multiple of pi basically is going to work. So this equation, sine x equals zero, is going to give us the answer x equals n pi, where n is an integer. That's what we're gonna get from that first equation. Now let's solve the second equation. So we can just subtract one. We get minus cosine x equals minus one. We can divide by negative one or multiply if you prefer. 
and you get cosine x equals 1. So again, let's revisit that unit circle and see what we can find out from our pictures. So here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis, and here's our beautiful unit circle. And again, on the unit circle, every ordered pair is of the form cosine theta comma sine theta. So when is the x-coordinate equal to 1? Well, right here, this is the only time. This is the point 1 comma 0. This angle is 0. This angle is also 2 pi, but it's also negative 2 pi but it's also 4 pi, etc. So it's any even multiple of pi. So this equation is going to give us the, the answers x equals 2n pi, n is an integer. The first equation told us that x was equal to n pi. The second equation told us that x is equal to 2n pi. So when you combine these together, you can just use x equals n pi, because n could be an even number, and that takes care of everything. So putting these two pieces together, okay, the answer, the final answer to this problem is going to be x equals n pi, n is an integer. And again, the reason this is true is because if you think about it, this takes care of the case where x is 2n pi. For example, if you choose n equals 1, you get x equals 2 pi. Oh, but you can just use 2 here in our answer and that'll work. If you choose n equals 2, you'll get 4 pi. Well, you can just choose 4 in our answer here and it will work. So this x equals m pi takes into account both of these conditions here. So the final answer, I'm just going to write answer so there's no confusion, <laughs> is x equals m pi, where n is an integer. Kind of a fun problem. I hope you've learned some mathematics in this video, and I hope it's been helpful to someone in the world. Until next time, good luck. Take care.